In today's video, we're going to take a look at what is realloc and how to properly use it. Okay, so to start off, we're going to just allocate um, a simple array that has, it is of course dynamically allocated. So I'm going to say malloc size of int and oops, size of int and let's say times 10 or something like that. And okay, and suppose we have a for loop and for some reason this for loop goes uh, up beyond 10, it goes like 15 and inside this for loop we actually try to you know, add some elements to it. Let's say that we want to add, I don't know, the number 11 to it. All right, and as you might notice, of course, this will uh, cause a segmentation fault because probably you're accessing, you're accessing some really, uh, some memory that you're not supposed to, right? So what do you actually do? Well, in most cases, you can just change this to 15, but let's say that we don't know that this is going to be 15, right? Let's say that there's some complicated code in between and there's all sorts of stuff, all sorts of reasons, and uh, we just don't know. We just don't know how many uh, elements are going to be added to this array later on. So what do we do? Well, this is where realloc comes in. So first things first, we can actually just call realloc here. And uh, all it takes is two arguments. One is the pointer to which we already have memory allocated and then it's new size, right? So all, all realloc does is it basically changes the size of uh, the block that uh, we already have allocated. Right? So we can say here size of int and let's say we want 15 this time. We have changed our minds and uh, yeah, let's suppose that at this point we already know how many elements we have. And of course I'm going to just free this array so that we don't forget about that. Um, now, this code will work. It won't have that many issues. So in our case, okay, well, let's actually do something with it. Let's actually just print out all these elements. Let's say print f, uh, percent d space array of i, sure. Right, um, if I launch this, I'm gonna get 11, 15 times on the screen. So that's perfectly fine, it works, but there are some caveats to this. Now suppose that this is the actual memory view of our array, right? We have this array and it points to some memory on the system. And here we have like more memory to the left that we probably don't have access to and more memory to the right. Okay, perfectly fine. Um, in this situation, actually three things could happen when we call realloc. One of them is, well, we already have enough space to the right of this block of memory, so we can just allocate more memory to it. So realloc, all it does, it just says, okay, well, give me more memory. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assign this part of memory to this part of memory as well. I'm gonna merge them and I'm gonna uh, tell you that, oh, you are now the owner of this whole container perfectly fine and our code in that case it will work because notice our array still points to the proper place in memory right to the start of this container and now the container is a bit larger so we can access 15 elements from it perfectly fine what's more important is the second case in which for some reason realloc sees that well there is some part of memory like right after this block of memory that we have allocated that is used by some other process. Uh, we don't know who or what it might be, just it's just used, all right? And we cannot we cannot allocate more memory in the same place. We don't have enough bytes here, all right? So what does realloc do? Well, it just simply finds another place in memory that has enough space and uh, it returns that to us, okay? So let's say that uh, down here it did find, I'm gonna actually scroll down here, but let's say, down here, it did actually find another uh, place in memory. It's a bit larger, uh, but it is a different place in memory, right? So that's the first step that it does. It first allocates that part of memory. Then it automatically moves the contents. I'm gonna use here, let's use a different color here. It's going to automatically move all the contents from this part of memory to this part of memory. All right, perfectly fine. So it does that all on its own. And also it is going to deallocate this block of memory, right? So these three things is what realloc is going to do. Okay, great. So that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Amazing, right? I mean, it does all of, all of this on its own. We don't have to do anything, but look at this. Where does array point to? Well, our pointer points to the old block of memory that is now deallocated. And that's bad news. That means that if we ever deallocate that place in memory, we risk a crash, right? So what do we do in this case? Does realloc help us with anything regarding this? In fact, it does. 
and uh, that has to do with the return value of realloc. So realloc here, you might notice that it does in fact return a void pointer, exactly like malloc, right? It's the same type, void pointer. And this is the new pointer to the new place in memory that might have been allocated. Or if it's in the first case where you just had to enlarge that block of memory, it's just going to return the previous um, the previous pointer, right? So it's going to be the same as array. So to fix this issue of array pointing to this old block of memory, all we have to do is just say array equals the return value of realloc. Perfectly fine. So we can just do this. We can no longer have this point to um, the old block of memory. We can just say, all right, you now point to this new place in memory that has more space. Great. Now the third case is when realloc actually fails. And there are a couple of reasons that it could fail. Usually just it couldn't find um, the amount of memory we told it to find in a contiguous place in memory. Right? What does that mean? Well, let's say that, I don't know, we have, um, we have this memory. This is our own system memory. So our whole system memory. And I don't know, let's say that we have four gigabytes of memory. Okay, and we ask for realloc to give us one gigabyte. Okay, in total, we might have <laughs> one gigabyte of free memory, but it might be segmented. So let's say that, um, let's say this whole place is actually allocated, and then there is a 512, right? So 512, let's see here, 512 megabytes here, and then this is also all used, right? And then there's another 512. In this case, right, realloc is going to fail. Now, how? How is it going to fail? Well, it is simply going to return null, right? So the result is going to be null. Now, one thing you have to realize here is, first things first, if this guy fails, we're going to actually crash the whole system. So we can actually check if array is null, right? And let's say here, fprintf, std error, and failed to realloc. All right, and then we just return one. Okay, perfectly fine. But you might have noticed that I actually allocated memory here, but I once returning, I didn't actually free anything because what am I gonna free, right? And I say free array. Well, that's not gonna do anything because array is null. So there is another problem. And that is our memory that we had previously, this one, right? We, we don't have a pointer to it anymore even though it still exists. So don't uh, don't worry when realloc actually fails to reallocate, this part of memory still exists. Okay, so it's no longer deallocated. It's still there, you can still use it. It's just that the realloc call failed, that's all. In that case, well, we actually have to have here another variable, let's say, I don't know, result or something like that and say, if res is null, in that case, we can free the array and return an error statement. And of course, if it's not null, right? So if it didn't enter this if statement, that means that we haven't returned, so it's not null. And we can say array equals res. And we can still override this because even though they might be different, so we know that this guy either doesn't point to anything valid, this has been deallocated, or it's actually the same. And in that case, these two don't do anything. It's just uh, <laughs> the same value we assign to it. And in the end, of course, we just do one single free call because in fact, we just do have one single block of memory in in every case covered here. <sighs> that was actually quite a lot for just a simple realloc call. But for you to remember all this, let's take a look at a proper example, right? In which we actually look at uh, memory addresses and see how they change, right? So let's actually take this array, all right? And let's print F. We can use here percent %p to, point, uh, to print a pointer's address. We can say x of n, and of course we're gonna pass in array. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this res, right? So I'm gonna say res, and this is, well, this is the initial allocation, and this is when, after, after we have reallocated. And in this case, as you can see, the difference in bytes is not that large. It's just five times uh, four, it's 20 bytes more from that block of memory. If we try to launch this, you will notice that, well, even if we have only allocated 20 more bytes, it did in fact change, right? This address is different than this. 
that means that we are in this case that we have talked about and well this was very important to do but uh, what happens if we let's say make it smaller let's say we change it to eight for some reason we don't need as many bytes right with realloc you can change it to be uh, for that block of memory to be larger, but you can also make it smaller if you don't need any more memory for some reason, right? And just to make things, you know, fair, I'm going to change this for loop so it doesn't break. Um, if I launch this, you will notice that the address didn't change this time around because usually when it makes things smaller, um, the operating system doesn't move uh, that block of memory around. It was a bit more tricky to find, but here in uh, in this example, if we have like a hundred integers allocated and we reallocate with 101 integers if we try to launch this you will notice that the address didn't change right even though we have enlarged that block of memory so this is the first case that we have talked about and for the third case in which realloc fails we can try to just allocate way too much memory so something like oh i don't know let's say this should be 1 billion times uh, the size of int which is 4 so that should be 4 gigabytes of memory which is way more than uh, you'd expect and well in this case it did actually succeed so i don't know let's add another zero and uh, as you can see it did return null right so this res was null so it just printed out failed to realloc so in this case um it ran as expected all right that's about it for this video i hope you got something out of it if you do have any questions leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server again the source code for this uh, video is going to be found on our website down in the description below. Take care.